Today, we're gonna to talk about six alternatives to journaling. For those of you who do journal and enjoy it, then this may be something you keep on the shelf until you may be ready for something different. But for those of you who do journal and do wanna switch it up a little bit like I do, then these are some of the ways you can do it. And for those of you who've never journaled, you can maybe consider some of these for your way to start or implement into your other journaling. Now I've been journaling for years, maybe 25 years. And I started out journaling in a book, many books, had so many books that I ended up burning them because I really don't go back and review them. I, they're just uh, a place that I empty out and uh, keep writing about my life. So eventually I started putting my journal into my computer where I could password protect it. Not that I was ever in jeopardy of people reading it. I felt that it was always safe, but it just felt better for me to have it in my computer because I type much faster. And when I was journaling, I couldn't even read it if I wanted to because I would just write so fast because my mind thinks so fast and I can type much faster. So what happens for me is I might wake up and say, you know, I need to journal because it's just what I've been doing for so long, but I don't feel like it. For whatever reason, I don't feel like writing, I don't feel like going to my computer or to a book. And so I've come up with a few things over the years that I use as an alternative. And sometimes it stays my way of journaling for a while. And sometimes I just do it when I want something different. I'm about to share them with you. The sixth one is my favorite. And, uh, and many of them are ones that I really like to do, but it was the most unique one. So I hope you'll stick around for number six. But we'll start with number one. Sometimes you don't wanna write your journal, but you can recap it in your head. So I can just sit there in my bed or in a shower or while I'm driving in the car, and I could recap what I need to in my head. Maybe what I'm grateful for, uh, what do I wanna do for the day? What do I want to think about what happened to me and who do I wanna be in spite of it? You know, So I, I put a lot of things into the just being deliberate in my thinking and not just thinking about nothing during the day, but be deliberate. And that's very effective for me, just to make sure that I contributed to who I am and how I wanna feel and who I wanna be for the day. And number two on alternatives for journaling would be an outline. So maybe you don't feel like doing, this happens to me a lot, you don't feel like doing all the typing. And there's many times I put in pages and pages into my journal and uh, other times, not so much. I put the date in and I say, I don't really wanna write anything today. So I might write down a couple of words. I might do an outline. I might write a paragraph. I might put in a photo, just something to represent that Fran was there. And the outline seems to help because I could say, I'm angry about this. I'm happy about this. I'm planning on doing this. And it's just quick and easy documentation, like I said, once in a while, just to go back. And if I did want to go back, it's there. And number three on the alternatives is a mini vision board. I can't say that I've done this a lot, but I have done it. I've done vision boards, digital vision boards for years, but to make it a journal is something I haven't done as often, but it's kind of nice if you're either sitting around and you have pictures to cut out of a magazine or like me, I'll just open up a Word document or a graphics program and just take some pictures I get off of uh, Google and I'll put them there. So what do I want on a mini vision board? Whatever I want to do. If I want to go to the park today, if I want to go shopping or how I want to feel, I might put something either in words or something beautiful. You know, if I want to have love in my life, I might even just put a heart. I don't have to you know, make it something fancy. And then I save it. Or I don't, so that's another thing. I don't always save my, my journals because it's not always important to have it for a reference. It's important that I have it for that moment to get things out of. And number four is another favorite of mine is an audio journal. Because sometimes you don't wanna write, but you can just speak into your phone or into a recorder or into any kind of audio program you might have on your computer and just speak. And I've done that a lot of times. Sometimes you just go into your texting program and hit the one where you can record your text and I'll just send it to myself because I just want to 
say something important about me that I'm happy or proud or uh, committed to something. So an audio journal really helps. Again, like I said, if you want to save it into a little file, that's for all your audio journals, and you can go back to that. Which leads me into number five, a video journal. This one is another one of my favorites because I love to make videos and to save them in a file. And you probably have seen like YouTube videos where people who are on a big weight loss adventure or people who are on a, a body shaping adventure or something, some kind of goal that they actually give a daily accounting of their uh, accomplishments. Well, you can do this yourself. You can create a daily video journal that you could actually go back to and see progress. And if you're doing it on your phone, you could save it into an album for your video journals and you can go back and look at it or at least have them for whatever you need them for. Maybe one day you'll want to write a book. One day you'll want to go and post it on YouTube. You never know, but it'd be pretty cool to have. You could always edit it if you don't want everything on there. So I would, that's a, an important thing to make sure I say. If you're going to video or audio journal and you're concerned about if you wanted to use it one day for a book or to publicize it, go full out. No, do not edit yourself because it's very important that you get everything out authentically without a fear of somebody seeing it. And then if you're going to go and put it out there for the world, then you can go and edit it, but not when you're actually delivering. Okay, so now it's time for my absolutely all-time favorite way of journaling. And I did this for probably a year one time because it was just so different that it was so and I do it occasionally now but it was so different at the time so I've gone to some spiritual event and before the main speaker was coming out they had a few guest speakers and one of them was this amazing woman from uh, New Mexico and she's an artist I don't remember her name all I remember is that she changed my life that day I love how people change my life and you may never see them again but you always remember them since she's an artist, she had done a daily portrait of herself as a journal. And don't worry if you're not creative or artistic, there's still something here for you. So please listen. So I consider myself an artist and I still didn't want to do what she did. And what she did is an actual portrait of herself and different every day. And so by looking at her portraits every day, she was able to see how she was, was she sad, was she happy? How did she wake up that day? And she was able to really feel her journal, which I thought was such a fabulous idea. And because I like to draw and I've done portraits in my life, I thought this is gonna be a piece of cake. So I go home and I set up my easel and I set up a, um, a uh, sketch pad. I had some pastels and I kept them right by my bed so that I could wake up every day and do a portrait of myself. I didn't really enjoy it. So I thought, wow, this sounds like such a good idea, but I can't even draw myself. I could draw animals or people, but it wasn't for me to draw myself. Here's the thing that really took it over the edge and made it special for me. I decided to draw how I felt in shapes and colors. And I just would, I remember for a year almost, I was drawing the same shape. It was like, I was drawing my insides like a, a straight line with dark black. I was going through a really tough time or really big, bold colors or frustration. And I just remember drawing every day something so similar. I was thinking, when is this shape going to go away? And eventually it did. Eventually I had healed from seeing my insides and the colors that I was using. And I started feeling softer and gentler and more peaceful and more healed. It was an amazing exercise, an amazing gift for me to give myself. So if you're not artistic, but you can tell that you're feeling something in a color or a shape, try doing a daily portrait journal. And we'll call it a portrait because I don't know what else to call it. But if it's just a shape or a color, it's still considered a portrait because it's what's coming from you. Now you may have other ways that you do a journal. I'd love to know. I'm sure other people would love to know what it is. So please put them down in the comments below or go over to our Facebook group, 
Thriving Over 60, join the group and feel free to share some of your journaling ideas, including some of these if you try them. There's so many ways out there to get yourself out there. Even if you wanted to cook your journal, you know, make a meal that represented how you felt. And I can only see some of you people are having bad days, which are good to cook. That would be fun. Well, not for the people who have to eat it. Anyway, I'd love to know how alternatives to journaling landed with you and what it inspired for you. And I'd also like to see the end result if you want to share it. I'm Fran Asaro. This is Thriving Over 60. I'm so glad that you're here and I hope to hear from you more. Have a great day.